one of the things that sometimes people don't see quite as clearly is the way in which a show such as In Progress fits into a context, an historical context, and one more recent as well. And within that context, these kinds of shows and community murals uh, from La Raza in particular, and in other parts of the world from other communities of people, are very, very threatening to the, the power brokers, the powerful people that run the major galleries, major cultural institutions in the country, and in fact, um, would like to be, and in fact are, running the country itself. What these, what Raza murals and, and community murals in general offer is a direct opposite of the kind of isolated, struck by genius, romantic artist working away in a garret. Uh, community murals offer instead a vision of people working together. Uh, it's a social vision where people are not isolated. That's very threatening. Um, Rasa murals assert a number of things. They, at, at the same time, they try to recapture a suppressed cultural history. In doing that, they reject a contemporary media plastic uh, kind of society, a commoditized society that's laid on to them. And all this asserts a certain kind of self-determination, a control over one's life um, that is hard to find in other kinds of artworks and in other kinds of social expression. What we see in the in-progress show is really an embodiment of some of the most exciting characteristics of community murals. Um, it is ethnically mixed. It is mixed media. Several different media are being used in this show. But the most important things, I think, is that the show is social. It's open. The doors of the Galleria were open while the original pieces were being created. The doors of the Centro here were open while the pieces were being created. And that means anybody can walk in. And that demystifies the art process. It's not so much genius work as it is just plain old hard work like everybody else does uh, five or six days a week. The, the, the potential for this show traveling, I think, needs to be emphasized as well. Because it's not just a San Francisco show any longer. It's a show that's moved all around the state of California and has some possibilities for moving into other states um, in the next year. These are cut out so that they have a certain pseudo-dimensionality, I guess, is one way of describing it, when they're put together. And this will be put together as a Loteria card. And the name will be La Placa, a name suggested to me by uh, Isaac Artenstein. And it'll go, it'll go like this. And it'll be here on this part of the, of the, of the mural. Let me move some of this stuff. OK, so this is supposed to go over here like this. And then here on this side, there'll be a wheel. I drilled a hole in the masonite and the wheels like this. So it'll spin. See? Like this. And what I want to do is the piece is going to have, you're going to be able to play the piece. The piece is going to be a game. I'm going to have three dimensional loteria cards, like for uh, El Corazon. I'll have something that looks like this, and it'll be attached to the outside. So for example, the heart is uh, bound up with barbed wire, and the flames are chiles. So is there any erotic And you know, I think chiles are associated with passion and, uh, and heat. And this heart is a passionate heart. It's based on the heart that we always see Jesus Christ exposing as he's opening his robe. But the barbed wire lends a kind of a, 
a thought-provoking aspect to it, and, and I would hope that all the pieces would have some sort of thought-provoking aspect. The placa that this young man is carrying, for example, I think is thought-provoking. It says, Así era México antes del robo, which has something to do with history and also with the present. Ojalá puedas mantener el equipo de Anhang, Abihe, Antimo, Sector B, Sector B, Alien Presence Detected, Sector B, Juan Laguna, Sector B. Y luego cuando pintas, pita en medio del cuadro, no, no pintes eso. No, eso es. Hazlo de vuelta naturalmente, como si estuvieras viéndolo así tú ya. Perfecto. Ahí sigue, ahí sigue el mundo. Perfecto. Dale. There are people, however, that think that our artistry is too local, that it's too regional. However, universality can only come out of locality. 1969 to me was the crucial year because I decided to publish. I decided to make my art public. And that's what murals are all about, you know. Instead of studio art, you have mural art. There is a difference between doing art for a family, uh, a household, four walls, a book, or reading it out loud. I think that is what uh, Chicano art is all about, uh, taking it to the people. When they first see it, they may not they may wonder, they may say, well, what does this mean? But they will think about it. Indigenismo uh, was necessary in order to understand ourselves, to walk with two feet, to know that we came from the Spaniard and the Indian. But we are ourselves. We are in what they call the United States. And this is not an alien land to us. This is our land. This is not alien territory and they ask for papers, and they, were, they want working cards now, man. Can you believe that? Working cards to identify the working people. Murals have a very ancient um, history behind us. I mean, w murals, in pre-Hispanic times were a very important uh, way of communication. And then the Mexican muralists, I think, contributed also to that, to that extension of history in uh, the 30s and the, in the 40s. And I think in the, in the past 20 years, we've, we've gotten, in the, in the special phenomena that we have in the United States, have been doing Chicano murals. I like to explain what my, what my feeling is about what Chicano is, and I think that needs to be clarified, that it is a political attitude. Uh, Ramses uh, seems to think that, that he doesn't want to deal with the monstruo. Uh, to me, that's very difficult to do. I see the monstruo all over the place. When I'm working in the schools, I see that, that <coughs> excuse me, that we don't get any of our history taught in the schools. I, our knowledge of um, our own families, our own communities is really non-existent. We don't have images of our heroes, of our uh, monuments to anybody um, that we can relate to directly. 
And I think that that's all part of that oppressive monster that's, that's around us. And I, and I feel that murals are one of the, the finest tools that we have as Chicanos to, to start changing that attitude. He's high. I think he's high. <laughs> he must be high. Oh, I see. Now, He's a pseudo-radical. No, you have to understand one thing. Siqueiros did fight for rights of the Spanish people, but in terms of the Mexican Revolution, he was just called the Coronelazo. That's oh, no. Who the hell wrote that? Rivera or something? Oh, that's because Rivera and Siquiros never got along, and their writings go back and forth. And so, so did uh, There's all this petty jealousy, man. You know, petty jealousy Michael shit. Michelangelo and the Dixie hated each other. Yes, we're waiting, we're waiting to be yeah. I, I would never be caught saying that, you know? Myself, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to Those are pretty heavy words, man. Better than Siquiros. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I have to. I'm I'm sure they do have a The painting that I wanted to express here is like uh, Chicano surrealism in the new wave art, you would say. And uh, I want to also have the four elements, the sky, the smoke coming out of the teepee, the water that is the lake, the earth, the mountains, and the young people, like young love. Also, I didn't want to paint violence or really political subjects, but mostly uh, a personal affair, you would say. So I really wanted to paint the spirit of the mountains, so I put it painted all this National Glacier from Montana, that which used to be my front yard. Like I was telling you, this, is, this front yard is, was like my studio, so I practiced painting uh, snow and trees and mountains. And so uh, now here in San Diego, I want to paint, paint it because I feel like I want to go back to the mountains, you would say. Philip David moving up. Can you feel that? Yeah. There you go. Very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. Keep it there steady for about five seconds. And then after five seconds, still. Yeah. 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 No, it picks up the lavender a little bit on the bottom, just a touch, not as much. Did she hit you in the eye? Okay, don't go out that door. Go around the front. To Hace falta luz ahora, sí, espérate. No está muy mal esta iluminación. It's rolling, okay? Cut. It's rolling, you want it? No, cut. It's just like a, it's like a picking.
good. Just keep on going. Keep on going. Yeah, but what happens if the people don't like what the artist is painting? What do you well, think then, happens? Well, then, if they don't like it, then they don't have to look at it. They can throw <laughs> it away and just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Again, I see that the monster, uh, it does not just affect Chicanos and blacks and third world people, but it affects all of us, uh, all people, all human beings. Um, the other thing is that for me, it's been a very simple uh, road to, to hoe, you might say, um, identifying who the oppressor is and then wishing to use my work to, to somehow reach the community, to clarify, to explain how that oppressor works and how he keeps us oppressed. Um, uh, Ramses mentioned that um, uh, people would rather go see Ronald McDonald. Uh, I, I'm in total agreement with him, but I think that that's where the responsibility of the artist is, is, is to educate uh, and not by himself, but to uh, tying himself up with community organizations who are working within the community because uh, if the people don't understand what you're doing or what your image is speaking about, then it's not going to do anything. But if you're working with a community organization that's trying somehow to raise the consciousness of that community, then your work adds to that, com that organization or that organization helps to develop your art or uh, clarify it. Um, now, in making that choice, I think the, the artist, once he makes a decision that he's going to work to that end, then I think he has to give up the idea that someday he's going to become famous, that someday he'll be written about, um, because it, as I mentioned once before, uh, somewhere along the way, that I cannot expect the same system that I wish to change totally to accept me as one of them. Uh, I can't be, I can't accept, expect that their critics are going to love me. Uh, in fact, maybe if they would say something nice about me, I would question my own work. Uh, because uh, the work that I do should be diametrically opposed to what the critics and the art world uh, is attempting to do. Now, if we look, if we just think for a moment, the art world, mainstream art, is such a small, small thing. It's very, very small. It's been identified for us. Uh, we look at great works of art and we only speak of them because they have educated us. They have told us this is why this is good and this is why this is good and this is why this is good. And then we become puppets of our art history instructors and we go out and we do the same thing. Now, one of the reasons that we do not see as many people in events like this or other events is because, think of it, who controls, I mean, we go to their movies, we read their books, we read their novels, we go to their stores, we buy their fashions, we're influenced. And there's very, very few artists who are out working in the community. And when I say community, I don't mean I met on El Barrio. I mean, I, I moved from Oakland a couple years ago and some guy said, Malakias, you're leaving the movement. And I couldn't, um, I, that sort of told me where he was at because I don't know, if the movement is not just in the barrio, the movement is in tu corazón and you take it wherever you go. Uh, I'll stop there and we'll end later. <laughs>